An ancient evil has arisen from the shadows. Sauron gathers power. His malice inflames those who follow him. To the north, he sends Agendauer, cruel master of dark sorceries, to crush all who would dare oppose him. Against this rising shadow stand those who do not seek glory, who do not seek power. Those who fight to stem the onslaught. To protect their people, their lands, and all of Middle-earth. Three bright flames of courage. To challenge the darkness. Of the great war of the ring, many songs have been sung and many tales told. The names of heroes like Gandalf the Grey, Aragorn the King, and Frodo the Ringbearer are greatly revered, and rightly so. Yet Sauron's grasp stretched much further than the lands of Gondor and Rohan alone, and his forces might have done great evil in the north of Middle-earth had a handful of heroes not stood in his path. Their stories, too, deserve to be told. Pay heed now to one such tale, which begins here in the town of Bree, just a few short days before Frodo arrived on his quest. Aragorn. Enadon. Well met. And in company with Andriel of Rivendell and Farin of Erebor. An unlikely trio to find walking through the doors of the Prancing Pony. You were at San Ford last I knew. Do you bear news from Harbalad? Yes. Grim news. I feared it would be so. Quickly, tell me what has happened, but keep your voices low. There are unfriendly ears, even here in Bree. Three days passed. The guard at San Ford was attacked by nine black riders. We were overwhelmed, and the enemy passed into the Shire. This is worse than I imagined. I know these riders. It is from Mordor they come. Our folk could not hope to stand against the Nine together. How bad were our losses? Very bad. We tried to resist them, but they were surrounded by an aura of unnatural dread. There is more you should know. After the rout, one of the Black Riders met with an ally, a man of great malice and power. Agnawa. As 
our master commanded. I have stirred up the orcs of the mountains. Even now, I have a force gathering amid the ruins of old Fornost. Return at once and prepare your forces. We will have need of them soon. My orcs will be ready. These lands have known peace for too long. They will soon feel the Dark Lord's wrath. If this Agandar has a force at Fornost, then our position grows all the more desperate. But why all this force against the peaceful halflings? It can't be the enemy sees them as a threat. I will say this much. There is a hobbit of the Shire who should be coming this way with a great burden. If it falls into the hands of the enemy, it will mean doom for us all. Now this hobbit is adrift on the road with enemies all around. I must find him before they do. And I need you to help me keep him safe. You are my chieftain. I will gladly do whatever you command. I... I'm a part of this now as well. Then we three are of one mind. How can we aid you? We must reduce the threat from the enemies gathered at Fornost. Travel there and do whatever you can to keep the enemy's eye turned towards you and away from the Shire. Perhaps we will have help in this task. Eladan and Elro here were in the north when last I heard. Any gathering of the enemy is certain to attract their attention. Good. You could find no better allies than the sons of Elrond Half-Elven. I hope we meet. But with or without help, the enemy will be kept busy. We'll make sure of that. I have a few questions, if I may, Aragorn. Shh. Here in Bree, there is no Aragorn. Only Strider the Ranger. What of this man, Agendauer, who met with the Black Riders? What do you make of him? Some servant of the Dark Lord, and by his name, one to be feared. His presence in the North bodes ill for us all, but I'm glad you discovered it. At least now we are forewarned. Those things that attacked us at Sound Ford, those Black Riders, I've never seen anything like them before. What are they? Do you not know them? There are whispered tales and legends enough that tell of them. They are the Nine, the Ring Wraiths. Of all the servants of the enemy, they are the most feared. This Agendauer, he was no wraith. He seemed like a man, one filled with malice and dark power, but a man nonetheless. But what kind of man would serve the Dark Lord? Not all the Dark Lord's servants are wraiths and orcs. There have been and still are many men, warriors and kings that walk alive under the sun, and yet are under his sway. Willing or unwilling. What can you tell me of Fornost? Fornost was once a great city, the capital of the Dunedain kingdom of Arnor. It fell to the Witch King long ago. The men of Gondor and the Elves formed an alliance that drove the Witch King out, but Fornost was never rebuilt. The ruins remain a place of dread for many. The men of Bree call it Dead Man's Dyke and fear to go near. It is a perfect place for our enemies to gather in secret. Those things that attacked us at Sound Ford, those Black Riders, I've never seen... Do you not know them? There are whispered tales and legends enough that tell of them. I don't understand why you hide your name. Surely it is a name to be proud of. The Dark Lord in Mordor would not be pleased to know that Isildur's heir still lives. The time is not right for Aragorn, son of Arathorn, to stand revealed to the world. For now, I am simply Strider. Yes, Strider it is. But what will you do now? I will continue the search for the hobbit I spoke of. I've already scoured the road between here and the Shire, but found no trace of him. I fear he may have left the road, perhaps to escape pursuit. My hope now is that he will make his way here to Bree, the only safe haven for many miles. But if he does not appear soon, 
would take to the road again in search of him. Should the enemy at Fornos join in the hunt, well, you understand just how grim our chances will become. I need you to prevent that. Go to Fornost. Take the fight to them. We will do all we can. Farewell. Hello, Master. A ranger by your looks, I'd say. Well, all are welcome here, long as they mean no harm. Some of the locals may not take to your kind, but don't let that bother you none. Folks around here are suspicious of those that don't know. <laughs> what can I do for you, then? What can you tell me of Bree? Oh, Bree is an old place. Been here for ages and ages. This is the only place in the world you'll find hobbits and men living side by side. We used to see a lot of travelers coming through Bree. Not so much nowadays. I still get customers enough to keep me busy. Tell me about your inn. The Prancing Pony's been in my family for generations. I can't rightly say how long. It goes that far back. I'm told there's been an inn on this spot nearly as long as there's been a town. What news have you heard lately? Lately, the talk's mostly about trouble away to the south. Seems like there may be war or some other calamity brewing down there. Folks have been coming up the Greenway, or the old road from the south, looking for a place to find some peace. Are they settling here in the Bree lands? Well, no. It's not that we aren't sympathetic to their troubles. It's just that Bree belongs to Bree folk. We can't take in a lot of outsiders. And the truth is, I don't like the look of a lot of these newcomers. Some of them have mischief on their minds. I may have need of a few things before I leave town. Where should I look? Well, we have stores and shops here in town. But I suspect most of them wouldn't suit your needs. Hmm. You might try Algar Old Bank's shop. He's got a collection of unusual items which might interest you. It's right across the street from here, uh, on the corner. If it's repairs you need, try Elman Brushwood, our blacksmith. His smithy is just across the street, but there on the corner. What news have you heard lately? Lately, the talks... Are they settling here in the breed? Well, no. Thank you, and goodbye. What have we here? A stranger in town. A stranger's just what I'm looking for. Interested in a little harmless pastime? It's time to make some money from it. What sort of pastime did you have in mind? Why, nothing more than a simple game of riddles is all. I love a good game of riddles. But everyone in town has already heard all I know. I reckon I could stump you, though. I am no stranger to the riddle game. But how is money involved? It's simple. You stake some money and I ask you a riddle. If you give the right answer quick enough, I'll double your money. If you're wrong, the coins go to me. What? Very well. Let's hear your riddle. First, you have to put up your money. How much do you care to wager? Remember, you stand to double it if your wits are quick enough. Done. Now remember, you'll have to answer quick. I won't give you long with real money at stake. Are you ready? Yes. Let me hear your riddle. What belongs to you that others use more than you do? Oh, right you are. You're a smart one. Give me a chance to win it back, eh? What do you say to double or nothing on another try? 
Very well. Double or nothing. Ask away. Always running, never walking. Often murmuring, never talking. Has a bed, but never sleeps. Has a mouth, but never eats. What is it? Oh, correct. You've a cunning mind, no mistake. Go again, double or nothing? That is enough for me. Thanks for the game. And the coin. Bree is a pleasant enough place, but the people here mistrust my kind. Welcome to Bree. You're a stranger around here. May I ask you a few questions? What sort of questions? We hear a lot of talk from travelers these days. Most of them speak of war and of a growing shadow in the east. The townsfolk just dismiss this, say it's far away and doesn't concern us. But I'm not so sure. You've traveled, maybe seen a few things. What's your opinion? Should we be worried? There is much to worry about, and the danger is not far off. I was afraid of that. If only I could convince others. But until then, I will have to take action on my own. What do you intend to do? I'd like to arrange for arming the town. We'll need more than pitchforks if we're forced to defend ourselves. I tried to convince a dwarven merchant to bring us weapons, but he refused. But why would he refuse? He seems convinced there's no market for weapons in this town. The city wouldn't be worth his time. Perhaps I should talk to him. It's worth a try. His name is Groff. He's selling his wares from a market stall down the street. You might still find him there. I will let you know what he has to say. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Got my head in the clouds, I guess. Gloomy clouds, I'd say. Is something troubling you? Oh, no. It, it's no trouble. Not really. It's more like... Well, I'm in love. I see. And who is it that you love? It's Idona Bellflower, my childhood sweetheart. I always thought we were meant for each other. But her father doesn't like my prospects. He's arranging a match with the blacksmith, Edmund Brushwood. And she agrees with this match? That's just it. I'm not sure. I always told her how much I loved her when we were children. It was all a game back then. But then we got older and... we got so much harder to say. You should tell her how you feel, before it's too late. I want to tell her. I do. Look, this locket belonged to my mother. I want to give it to Idona as a token of my love. But the chain is broken, and Elman the blacksmith is the only one in town who can fix it. If I take it to him, he's sure to suspect something and turn me away. Why not let me take it to him? Yes, that might work. Elman would never suspect a stranger like you. There's one more thing. 
Idona's father. He keeps a careful eye on his daughter and won't give me a moment alone with her. I will take her the locket and your words. Wonderful! <laughs> Just perfect! Take the locket to Elman at the smithy across the street. Once it's repaired, bring it to Idona and tell her... Tell her I love her, and that I'll do everything in my power to make her happy every day we are together. Very well. I'll tell her. And just one more thing. After you talk to her, could you come back and tell me what she said? One way or another, I have to know. Never fear. I will bring you her answer. Ranger, are you? Let me guess. You've sprung some river to busted a blade out there roaming about the wild, and you need old Elman to make it right again. I have a locket with a broken chain. Do you think you can repair it? Let's see. Hmm. Looks like something might have been made in these parts. Maybe back in me old dad's day. Wouldn't expect one of your kind to have something like this. Where'd you come by? Where I came by it is my business. Repairing it is yours. No need to go all cross. I was just wandering is all. Anyway, it's a simple enough job. It'll cost you a silver penny, though. There you are. Good as new. I thank you. Farewell, Smith. Back again. What can I do for you? I will leave you to your work. good to see a ranger in my shop. Are looking to buy or sell? I have some things that might interest you. I never thought to receive such a warm welcome in Bree. <laughs> oh, I'll not deny there's folk in town who would prefer that rangers stayed away. But for my part, I'm happy to see them. There's no one like a ranger for bringing you news of the world. Not to mention items of interest. Have you heard any news lately? Plenty, but none of it good. Seems there's trouble away south. People are on the roads looking for new places to live. Folks around here are sympathetic, but none too eager to take in a host of strangers. I am afraid it will get worse. There are dark times ahead for everyone. Save me, but you make it sound bad. Personally, I prefer to keep my thoughts as cheerful as I may. Bree has always been a peaceful place, and I hope it will remain so. Your peace is maintained by the sweat and blood of others. You have no idea what dangers lurk a day's journey from your gates. Oh, now you're exaggerating. We here in Bree don't bother anyone, and no one bothers us. That's the way it works, don't you see? But let's not be so gloomy. Is there something I can help you with?
a strong man, Bramble. You do well with us. Sounds good, but I don't know. I wouldn't want to hurt no one. Not real bad, anyway. You think they care about you? I say take what you want and the rest be damned. Well, what do you want, Ranger? This is a private conversation. I would like to know what you were discussing. I don't see how that's any of your affair. Clear off. I was just curious. It sounded a bit suspicious. You mind your own business, eh? Those who go sticking their nose in where it doesn't belong are likely to get it cut off. Are you threatening me, Breelander? Oh, he isn't a Breelander. He comes from down south. He just showed up a week or two ago. Gone. Fools who can't keep their mouth shut are no use to us, Bramble. Do you like being called a fool, Harley? This man is no friend to you. I don't like being called names. I've had enough of being called fool by folks around here. Small wonder it is, Sue. Stay here with the rest of them, then. But things will be changing around here. You mark my words. You should stay clear of men like that. What did he want of you? Well, uh, I'm not really sure. He said there'd be changes around here soon, and those smart enough to join up with his friends would end up running things. He would use you and put a knife in your back when he no longer needs you. Stay clear of men like that. Aye, you're right. Folks here may not treat me the way I like all the time, but it's still my town. I shouldn't go siding with strangers. Well said, Harley. Farewell for now. Hello, is there something I can do for you? I am told you are pledged to the blacksmith. How do you feel about that match? What? Is my betrothal a matter of such importance that total strangers wish to discuss it with me? I have a message which I cannot deliver without knowing your feelings. This is all very mysterious, but if you must know, Elmwood Brushwood is a decent man who makes a good living, and he has my father's blessing. You have not answered my question. I asked how you feel. Everyone says that in time we will grow to love one another, but Elmond does not have my heart. If that is the case, I have something for you. From Rowley Appledore. A gift? From Rowley? But I thought that that is he... I, I'm sorry, it's, it's just so unexpected. What? This locket. It was his mother's. Oh, it's beautiful. But I don't understand. Why is he giving me this now? He also wished me to convey his love for you. Rowley loves me? Still? We were so close when we were children, but I thought he had forgotten all that. He seems quite sincere. But this is wonderful news. Wonderful. Rowley's always had my heart. Always. The poor, simple, wonderful fool. Your father will not share your feelings, it seems. Leave my father to me. He may not be pleased with my decision, but I promise you he'll come round. He always does. Well then, Rowley is awaiting an answer. Oh, please tell him I love him, and that we will find a way to be together always. A welcome message, I'm sure. Goodbye, Idona. Well now, if you don't mind my saying so, you don't look much like a Breelander. Is there something I can do for you? I have a favor to ask of you. A favor? What sort of favor? I would like you to bring a store of weapons to sell to the Briefo. <laughs> You're pulling my beard. Weapons for these folk? They wouldn't know which end of the sword to hang on to. Might as well try selling shoes to hobbits. 
They may have had no need of weapons in the past, but these are unsettling times. They must be able to defend themselves. I'll not deny times are growing dark. There's trouble all around. But you'll never get these folks to believe it. Life's been too easy for them for too long. Not everyone is blind to the growing threat. It was one of the townsmen who sent me to ask this of you. There are others who are worried as well. It'll take more than a few sensible folk to make it worth my time. These people are simple and peace-loving. It's plowshares they want, not swords. Don't let their past prevent them from preparing for their future. It would be wrong to leave them defenseless. Hmm. <clears throat> You're right, of course. Maybe it's not such a bad idea after all. At least I'd have no competition. All right, I'll do it. Excellent. How long will it be before the arms arrive? Some time, I'm afraid. It's a long trek to the Blue Mountains and back. Not to mention I'll have to convince my kin I've not lost my mind. Probably three months or more, I reckon. What can you tell me about the Blue Mountains and your people? The Blue Mountains are prosperous enough, although we find more iron than gold. We rely on iron working for our livelihood. That's why I'm here selling tools to the Brelanders. I will let them know when to expect you. Safe travels, bro. You're back! Did you speak to Idona? What did she say? I'm dying to know. It seems you have won her heart, Rowley. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful! I can't thank you enough, my friend. I but, but, wait, hang on. Oh, I completely forgot. Edmund must have charged you something for that repair. I owe you for that and for your trouble. Here, take what I have. I wish it could. No, you keep it. I think you may need this more than I. Well, if you're sure, thank you. I'm going to tell everyone how generous and kind you've been. Folks around here don't always trust rangers, but you'll always have at least one friend in Pre. I hope you will both be happy. Good luck and goodbye, Rowley. Did you speak with Groff? What did he say? Will he bring us weapons? I managed to convince him. You will have your arms. Excellent. My only concern now is the time it will take. What if we need to defend the town before the dwarf made goods arrive? Maybe you could help me with that as well. How so? I can tell by your gear that you are no stranger to a fight. If you should have occasion to... well... Let's say, recover any weapons you don't need, bring them to me, and I will pay you for them. I will bear that in mind. Farewell. Sign of the enemy. These ruins could hide a large army. 
We might even now be under the gaze of unfriendly eyes. Well, we came to provide a distraction for Aragorn, and what better way to do that than walking in the front door? Let's be about it. Creatures!
Looks like another ranger has hidden some supplies here.
not unhurt. These ruins are not sound. We must find a way out of these pits. Goblins are small, but deadly all the same.
Dunedain cache. 